Welcome back, Vancouver, to the Institute of Urban Ecology. Have you ever wanted to go explore in a rainforest? Well, pack your bags, because today that's exactly what we're going to do. Right outside your door is one of the world's most unique, biologically diverse ecosystems, the coastal temperate rainforest. But wait, what do I mean? Where's all the tropical plants and birds and monkeys? Well, as the name implies, you really only need two things to qualify as a rainforest. Trees, for one, and a lot of rain. I think we can all agree here in Vancouver that we get more than enough rain to qualify. So in today's episode, I want to introduce you to some of the trees and other characteristic plants that you'll find in our coastal temperate rainforest. So let's get started. The coastal temperate rainforest extends from sea level to approximately 150 kilometers inland to the base of the coastal mountains. Lower mainland BC consists of two biogeoclimatic zones, the coastal western hemlock zone and the coastal Douglas fir zone. Both zones are greatly influenced by the Pacific Ocean, but the coastal Douglas fir zone is very small. It only covers about 0.3% of the province and is restricted to low elevation areas. We call these biogeoclimatic zones because the biology or life in each zone is determined by the geography of the area, things like the soil, slopes, rocks, things like that, as well as the climate. We call these abiotic characteristics because they are non-living. Some of the abiotic characteristics in our coastal temperate rainforests include close proximity to the ocean, a mild climate with an annual temperature of around 5.5 degrees Celsius in mild summers, and of course, lots of rain. About a thousand millimeters annually for the coastal Douglas fir zone, and about 2200 millimeters for the coastal western hemlock zone. The plants, animals, fungi and bacteria make up the biotic or living characteristics of our temperate rainforests. Some of the most common plant species found in our coastal temperate rainforest are western hemlock, Douglas fir, red cedar, red alder, the big leaf maple, grand fir, shore pine, salal, several species of ferns, and red huckleberry. Now I'll show you how to easily identify these common plant species so you can go out and see if you have any in your own neighborhood. Contrary to other temperate rainforests around the world, ours is dominated by conifers. One of the most common conifers you'll find is the western hemlock. You can easily identify a western hemlock by its drooping leader, its short blunt tipped needles of varying length and the prolific number of small round cones it produces. The second most common conifer you will find is the Douglas fir. Douglas fir needles are longer than western hemlock and have a more pointed tip. The bark is thick and deeply furrowed more than any other tree in the region. The easiest way though to identify most conifers is by looking at their cones and the Douglas fir cones are the most unique in the region. They are long up to 10 centimeters, and they're the only ones with prominent three forked bracts extending beyond their scales. People say it kind of looks like the hind feet and tail of a little mouse hiding in the cones. The third most common conifer is the western red cedar. Cedars have very different needles than the other conifers. They're flat and scale-like. The bark looks like it grows in long, thin, vertical stripes that can easily be peeled away. It produces many, many cones like the western hemlock, but they are smaller, more egg-shaped, and have very few scales. The big leaf maple is another tree that easily stands out from the rest. It is the largest maple in Canada, reaching heights of up to 36 meters. As its name implies, the leaves are also the largest of any maple, reaching up to 30 centimeters across. It has multiple stems and carries more moss than any other plant in our forest. 
As a deciduous angiosperm tree, the big leaf maple does not produce cones, but instead spreads its seeds via these dry winged fruits that we all call helicopters. If you're not sure what the words deciduous or angiosperm mean, don't worry. As our series on the coastal temperate rainforest continues in the following weeks, we'll learn more about these different groups of plants, so stay tuned. Red alder is an important nitrogen-fixing tree. Its bark is gray to white and smooth, and its leaves are oval-shaped with large, blunt teeth around the edges. The easiest way to identify an alder is by its flowers that are called catkins, and its small brown fruits that look like pine cones, but they are not. The Grand Fir, as its name implies, is one of the tallest trees in the coastal temperate rainforest, reaching up to 80 meters tall. Their cones are hard to find as they grow high up in the crown of the tree and crumble as they mature. The Grand Fir is most easily identified by its needles, which are flat, have notched tips, and two distinct white lines on the underside. Unlike other firs, the needles on the ground fir mostly only grow on the sides of the branches, giving each branch an easily visible upper and lower surface. Shore pine, also known as lodgepole pine, is quite short, maxing out at only 20 meters tall, and its trunk is often crooked and irregular. You can often spot clusters of reddish-green pollen cones on the tips of the branches, and its needles are long and grow in pairs. Again, the easiest way to tell one pine tree from another is by looking at its cones, and the cones of the shore pine have thick, curved scales with a sharp prickle at the tip. Red huckleberry is a tree-like shrub that grows up to four meters tall. Its branches are bright green and squared. If you roll the branch between your fingers, you can feel its strong edges. Its leaves grow alternately on the branch, are oval and not toothed. Tiny pinkish white flowers grow on the underside of the leaves and ripen into round red berries. Salal is the most common understory shrub of the coastal temperate rainforest. It has thick, leathery, evergreen leaves with sharp, fine teeth around its edges. It produces small white or pink flowers in the spring, which ripen into dark purple fruits. Several species of ferns also make up a large portion of the understory. Coming up, We'll have a special episode dedicated all about ferns, so don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out. The coastal temperate rainforest is home to many animals, including ourselves. And some of those animals are endangered, like the northern spotted owl, the organ spotted frog, even some plant species like the phantom orchid. The coastal Douglas fir zone itself is considered endangered. Only about 1% of this zone is protected and those protected areas are small and kind of scattered and isolated and surrounded by urban development. The Institute of Urban Ecology's very own Dr. McGregor has been studying beetles in urban forests around Coquitlam. Over the years, he has discovered something rather remarkable. Dr. McGregor and the IUE team set ground beetle traps out in eight parks around Coquitlam. The parks are split into groups depending on the amount of human disturbance each was subjected to. Highly disturbed sites are places where there are lots of human interaction like small popular parks surrounded by lots of housing, and less disturbed sites are more isolated from human interactions. For each site, the number of introduced species and native species of ground beetles was recorded. Several years of data came back with the same results. The more disturbed sites were home to more introduced species of ground beetles, and the native species were mostly found in the less disturbed sites. What could this mean for the future of our urban ecosystems? Could other native plants and animals face the same fate? There are a few things that you can do to help. First, try landscaping your yard with more native plant species. These native plants don't require a lot of extra watering because they've adapted to our climate here and they're also going to provide our local wildlife with some more habitat even in an urban setting. You can also sign up to join in on a shoreline or forest cleanup or invasive species removal. Coming up we're going to talk more about native plants, invasive species, even those beetles that Dr. McGregor has been studying. 
So make sure that you subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out. Until next time, Vancouver, thanks for doing your part to help protect our urban ecosystems. We'll see you next time. Bye for now.